Hey guys, this is Cameron Dolan. I want to thank you for tuning us in for this third episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. We've got some great guests on this episode, including Mo Pitney, Melody Thomas Scott, Christy Pierce Rampone, and one of my favorite legendary actors, James Cromwell, will be wrapping up the program. Like I mentioned, our first guest is Mo Pitney. He's currently climbing the country charts with his latest single, Ain't Bad for a Country Boy. This visit comes from last week. I actually talked to him on the eve of the release of his latest album, Ain't Looking Back. Mo, thanks so much for taking the time to be on the show. Hey, man, thank you so much. And I'm going to tell you that um, you, you just said something that I have already said about a hundred times. We have two songs on this new project that starts with the word ain't. <laughs> One of them is the title track, uh, Ain't Looking Back, and the, and the single is Ain't Bad for a Good Old Boy. So I've mixed them up probably 30 times since we've made the record. and and uh, But the single is uh, Ain't Bad for a Good Old Boy, and... Uh, we're we're very very excited about it and uh, uh, happy to be talking to you about it. The album was the what was it? What is coming out today? That's what. Uh, yeah, I had two ain'ts next to me and I picked the wrong one. That's <laughs> that's just the way it goes. And but, today today is the release of of ain't looking back the the album, which is exciting too. So that's we get to talk about two things at once. Yes, and uh, and Mo, as as the single has uh, has gained traction, uh, you've been picked up all over the nation. For, for you, whenever a single uh, starts getting some feedback, what's what's that like for you as an artist? Oh my goodness! You know, I think all of us are riddled with self doubt. <laughs> we 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 follow our hearts and we make music just. Um, hopefully out of a place where when we hear it back for the first time, we say, you know what, that, that makes my body move. That makes me tear up or whatever, whatever the song is trying to do. And, and you say, well, I like it. Well, I hope somebody else like it, likes it. So when you get feedback and it's good feedback, it's very reassuring. And, and when you get bad feedback, you just kind of got to, you just kind of got to shake that off. But luckily we haven't got too much bad feedback. We've gotten We've gotten some good feedback, and and that makes me very happy. Now the 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 album out today as well. Where where did the inspiration come from the new album, and and especially in a time like we're living in right now, uh, for for you to have new music out there to maybe brighten somebody's day? I know that's huge for you as well. Yeah. Oh yeah. We're, I was actually really blessed to have uh, finished all the recording um, and video work to support the project. Uh, before the world came to a crash. Um, so uh, the inspiration just came from daily life and and all of my life, uh, really, in between the first album and the second. Musically, the inspiration has come from this desire to let all of my musical influences show up in one place, in one album. Um, and I think it, the borders were, were spread uh, on the second album, more so than the than the first. So musically, that was the inspiration. And then lyrically, it really describes a lot of things that has happened in my life, good and bad, the highs and the lows, and all, all that in between on this album. And I hope that it relates, uh, other people can relate with me through the record um, and uh, celebrate life together, even in this dark time. That's right. You you talk about relating to the listeners, and and I think that's what se- what separates country music from any other genre is is the family. Uh, the, the the family you can you can tell a story, you can tell your life, and, and people get to know each other a little bit through the music. And and for you to put yourself out there, d- does that get scary sometimes? As as you're writing lyrically, or you ever like, yeah, I, I think I'm going to pull back on that one a little. Yeah, I'll agree with you that country music has always been. Um, known as a honest music, even if they're gonna, if it's tear in your beer or whatever it is, I'm just gonna be totally open and vulnerable. You know, other music, like pop music, has historically been, you know, let's let's create a facade that I'm the king of the universe and you want to be me. You know, that's kind of a different narrative than country music. But so yeah, to kind of join with all of my heroes, Cash and Merle and. And these guys, Keith Whitley, that just shared their heart, uh, whether it was good, bad, or ugly. Um, yeah, I love doing that. And at times, you know, vulnerability is scary for all of us. But I think the more that we open up, the more that we realize 
that we're met uh, with people that 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 say, you know, you're not alone in that, or and it's helpful for the listener to say, well, maybe I'm not alone in in the way that I'm feeling. So I think that's why God gave us music, and so I uh, I enjoy going down that path. Now, do you, you mentioned the names before you, and, and and you get compared to those all the time in, in your musical stylings. And does does that for you personally make put a little extra pressure on yourself, knowing that you're kind of ki- keeping the bar go, or keeping the baton going, if you will? Yeah, you know, it used to almost crush me because uh, people would say things like, "You're the savior of country music," and I had to really say, "I'm not the savior of anything. I need a savior more than anything." But um. Uh, I I um, I I'm very flattered by the compliment because it's just I love the the music of the past. I love music of today, and I love music of other genres. I just I just like being grouped in maybe with honest artists or uh, you know artists that knew who they were. Whether I'm carrying on their sounds uh, or you're just hearing their sounds through me because that's who I listen to. Um, I don't want to copy anybody. I just want to keep being myself and maybe being an extension of the tree of historical country music. And and I want to know what what that looks like today in 2020. But I do want to be pulling from the roots um, uh, or the foundation of where we came from because that's the only reason why we're here. That's the only reason why we're standing. That's right. And again, the new album out today, Ain't Looking Back. And Mo, always want to make sure and let our listeners know where they can keep up with everything you've got going, not only uh, musically, but uh, when the when the, when the tour dates are, are picking up and, and also social media as well. Yeah, so there's MoPitney.com that'll keep you tuned in on tour dates most clearly. We have Twitter, obviously. Uh, Instagram is what I'm staying mostly tuned in with, and we also have Facebook, which I do a lot of Facebook Lives and things like that to keep everybody updated. So you can find me anywhere you find, folk. Find out all about his social media, tour dates, and new music at MoPitney.com. Now, next up, I had the chance to visit with the legendary actress known for her role on Days of Our Lives that she has held for 43 years. Melody Thomas Scott has a new memoir, and we'll be talking about that along with the job of marketing in the midst of this pandemic. Thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Well, thank you very much. Now, now, Melody, the uh, the, the new book is available today that uh, we're going to talk about called "Always Young and Restless." And uh, for you, when did the, when did the idea of putting uh, the thoughts down on paper when did that first come come about for you? Well, I had known for several years that. There was a book in me um, due to my, you know, I was only three when I started in this business, and uh, I had a very unusual set of circumstances, uh, unusual adversities that uh, I I had told no one about. My co-workers knew nothing. Even my family knew very little about it. And um, the more I thought about it, I thought, you know, this is, this is, uh, I, I, I should reveal this because... If I can help other people to know that if you stay strong and persevere, there is hope to get out of the other end of any kind of adversity. Um, so that that kind of kept me going. But it was a long process. It took me a good 10 years uh, with some false starts in there of writing the book. But um, I'm, I'm so thrilled that... A, I finished it, and B, that today is the official release date, so um, it's very exciting. Now, did you did you ever see yourself as uh, as being a writer earlier on, or or was this something that uh, that that took a lot of maybe a, lo- a little bit of prodding from from other folks to kind of help you keep you moving along with it? <laughs> oh, I, I did need prodding for sure, uh, and my literary agent. Uh, he he kept, you know, hurry up, come on, come on, come on, come on. He gave me several pushes that I did need to finally finish it because, uh, you know, I can be a bit of a, oh, my, I can't even talk. I'm so sorry I've been doing some interviews. Uh, I can kind of let things slide and not be too on top of things. So he, he kept urging me on, and thank goodness he did. Um, so here we are. It, it's amazing. Now you talked about getting into the into the industry at the age of three. Uh, what kind of insight do you think that has allowed you to, to to keep the career going as long as you've been able to so far? Well, I think child actors 
um, learn very early on how to deal with rejection, which is a huge part of this business. Uh, you know, we, we learn this is nothing personal. Maybe you didn't get the job because your hair was the wrong color or your eyes were the wrong color, too short, too tall. Um, you learn to just let that roll off your back, and uh, that's a valuable lesson. Uh, I mean, I know many adults who cannot deal with rejection very well. So that that was important, and me, being me, I'm very stubborn. I'm an Aries, so I'm going to just keep knocking on doors until I get in. And, and perseverance pays off, and, and for you to be able to share your life experiences, even if it just uh, makes a difference in one person's life, maybe lifts somebody's uh, spirits for the day, I mean, what's that mean for you on a, on a personal side? Well, that makes it all worth it. That makes all the years of me struggling to write it and finally doing it, I mean, that, that was what kept me going, uh, definitely. Now, who has been the, 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 the biggest motivator for you at, th- throughout your career? You talk about the ups and the downs. Who, who was the, the stabilizing factor for you? Ooh, good question. Let me think. Um, goodness. I mean, I hate to be obnoxious and say that person was me, but in a way it was in that you, you need to have that kind of fortitude to keep going in this business, certainly, and many other businesses. Um, I, I'm also very much a fatalist and have always believed, even as a child, that wherever I end up, whatever path I take is where I'm supposed to be. So I would relate that to different jobs. If I don't get this job, I wasn't supposed to. There's another job around the corner. And, and if I get that, then that is where I'm supposed to be. That is where I should meet the people that will perhaps open up the next chapter of my life. So I'm still... Uh, a huge fatalist, and uh, I, I don't understand any other way to be. That's right. Again, the the book is out today, Always Young and Restless, My Life On and Off of America's Number One Daytime Drama, Melody Thomas Scott. There we go. We make sure we get it right at least once before we wrap up this morning. Melody, I want to make sure and, and let our listeners know where they can find out more information, not only about the book, but uh, but everything else you've got going on as well. Oh, golly. Um, well, I'm... Uh, you can go to my Twitter. You can go to my Instagram. Uh, I guess my name was too long for either of those because my account is Melody Thomas S C O Melody Thomas Sco uh, on both of them. Uh, you know, I, I've been everywhere. I'm in all the magazines, the grocery store. I defy anyone to go through a checkout line and not see my face. <laughs> see what this book has done? Oh, my gosh, I'm everywhere. I'm so sick of me. Well, Melody, it is it has been great to visit with you this morning. Like I mentioned before we came on the air, been a fan for, for many, many years. Hope you have a, a great rest of your week, and uh, hopefully we can catch up again real soon. Oh, thank you so much. I'd like that. Again, follow her on all of her socials at Melody Thomas Scott, except for on Twitter at Melody Thomas Sco. Our next guest is the most decorated female soccer star in U.S. history, Christy Pierce Rampone. We'll be talking about her new book, Be All In, also about being an inspiration to girls and young women worldwide. Christy, first off, thank you so much for taking the time to be on the show. Of course, thanks for having me, Cameron. Now, now, Christy, the uh, the, the new book out, uh, Be All In, uh, Raising Kids for Success in Sports and Life. And, uh, boy, this goes hand in hand, especially right now in these uh, the COVID times we're living in, right? Absolutely, yeah. I mean, especially with sports having an interruption right now during the pandemic and, you know, kids getting back into it, it parents, you know, trying to figure out the path that they want to set for their child. It's kind of, it's a good timing for parents to kind of reflect and read the book and, enjoy that journey with their kids through sports. And and it's amazing. Uh, sometimes folks, they think about sports, about the competition, but it can really do have great benefits uh, men, uh, mentally, uh, psychologically as well. Absolutely. Like the sports gives so much back than just winning, and that's kind of what we wanted to kind of help guide parents through is that like winning, yes, everybody wants to win, we're competitive, but you know the process to winning is developing and just being – there for your child as they develop through um, the the sport that they choose or the sports that they choose. So it's there's so many life lessons you can learn through sport, and hopefully the parents can help guide their kids through that. 
And and b- learning the uh, you know you deal with the pressures and and all that going to school and and, and how has sports helped you in uh, building the self esteem that you've that, that 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 you've got to have to deal with those situations? Oh, it was it was huge for me because I actually like was more confident on the soccer field or the basketball court more so than in like everyday life. So just those little you know, um, things you can take away from sports allowed me to be a little bit more comfortable in my own skin, like off the field, and to use my voice a little bit more and how to interact with friends and be a little bit more social. Um, I was a very quiet kid growing up, so as I got more involved with sports, sports and grew older, it, it helped me adapt into kind of the real world. And what are maybe some of the biggest challenges that, uh, or maybe the things that you've learned in this uh, coronavirus uh, stay-at-home quarantine time that uh, that maybe mm-hmm. you can help uh, with other folks that are dealing with the same issues? Yeah, I think it's just kind of being comfortable with that uncomfortable as parents, you know, because everything is changing. Like standards have changed, routines have changed. You know, you have to like alter, you know, some habits and just trying to slowly get back into our new daily life and, you know, understanding that there's going to be disruptions, there's going to be distractions, but it's how we get through it together and looking at this time as more of an opportunity versus a threat and, you know, continue to build with your child through school, through sports, you know, whatever, um, you know, comes their way. And what do you think the biggest positive that we can take out of this as, as we come back to whatever that new normal is? I think just embracing the relationship as a family. You know, we've had so much more time together with our children, you know, and be able to self-reflect on kind of just the relationship within the family and having, like, that family mission um, and communication to, you know, when everything does open up, to still find that time to connect with each other, um, whether that's through sports, school, you know, whatever that brings in that next chapter. Um, once COVID is over and everything is, is opening up just to, you know, be mindful of moving forward as a family. And, and Chrissy, I got to ask you, what was, uh, what was your first, uh, y- your first reaction whenever they, they, they put the nickname of Captain America on you? What was the first <laughs> thought whenever you first heard that? Um, um, it was kind of like, just an honor, Rob, to be honest, like playing for your country and then being named Captain America and like people realizing that my leadership um, was something that people wanted to aspire to be like. And, you know, for me, it's just making sure that I was, like, consistent every day for my team. And, you know, it's pretty cool that I actually got a nickname that is a positive and hopefully influence other um, leaders to, be, you know, do the same. And, and for soccer, for the for the U.S. team to have the, the, the notoriety, the uh, the uh, – the, the the winning attitude that we've had over the the last several years to be to be a part of that how cool is that to to, to look back on now oh it's amazing to be able to be part of a team and the process to victory and you know being on top podiums and like going through all like the tough times and you know what you had to sacrifice to get there and just be able to entertain um, was just was fun to be able to build something as a unit and a team. And to be able to, you know, be entertaining on TV and for fans to follow us and really get to know each individual player and their personalities was pretty pretty special. And again, the new book, Be All In, Raising Kids for Success in Sports in Life. And uh, Christy, I always want to make sure and let our listeners know where they can find out more information about the book and uh, and everything else you've got going on as well. Absolutely. So the, you can find information about the book on beallinbook.com. And the book is being sold on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, that's at Target and Walmart, and it comes out tomorrow. That's awesome. Well, Christy, again, great to visit with you. I appreciate your time, and I uh, hope you have a great rest of your week. Thanks, Cameron. Same to you. And our final guest of this episode is James Cromwell. You've seen him on the big screen and small screen. Such titles of his Babe, The Green Mile, The Longest Yard, The Sum of All Fears, and the newly released Emperor. James is going to visit with us about the new film and how timely getting its message is. James, thanks so much for your time. My pleasure. Now, now, James, if if, if folks haven't seen, uh, I was checking out the the movie The Emperor and uh, Man Alive. This is just a great story, and and, and t- James, I don't think it could be uh, more timely of the release coming up next week. Yeah, it is. It's um, it, things never change. <laughs> it's still the same same circumstance, or getting close to it. 
it, 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 and James, if folks haven't seen the, the the previews or the trailers, can you let our listeners know just a little bit the the, the story of Emperor? And, and this is a, a real life story as well, brought to the screen. That's correct. It's the story of a of a slave named Shields Green. Obviously, that's his slave name, uh, known as the Emperor because he was the descendant of African kings, uh, and he ran away from the plantation because of the violence and cruelty and made it almost all the way to Canada and then realized that he really couldn't, didn't want a life that didn't include his wife and his young son, so he went back. And on the way back to the South, in order to free his wife and son, he met this abolitionist named John Brown, joined John, John Brown, and they attacked a federal armory in Harper's Ferry, uh, took over the the uh, armory, uh, and then were suppressed by a contingent of Marines um, uh, that were sent by um, Abraham Lincoln under the leadership of Robert E. Lee that, that suppressed the um, the rebellion, and uh, and uh, John Brown was hung and. In real life, Shields Green was killed, but in the movie, uh, because it is a movie, he escapes, um, so there can be a second movie. Uh. <laughs> now, now, James, as as you prepare for bringing an adaptation of, of a true life story, does does that bring an extra an extra line of pressure to yourself, uh, bringing the authenticity to the character? Well, no, I don't think so. In this case, was I don't think anybody in this country or very very few people know anything about John Brown, so um, I couldn't disappoint them too much. Uh, one of the reasons I was drawn to the part was that my father, who was a director in Hollywood, directed a picture called Abe Lincoln in Illinois, and it showed the raid on Harper's Ferry, and my father, who was a Civil War buff, took the part of John Brown, so he directed it, and I have a picture of him in full makeup behind a camera directing the scene when when Robert E. Lee confronts John Brown, who's holding his dying son in his arms. And I thought uh, when I when the project was offered, I was offered another part, and uh, and I said, well, I, I, I really would like to do John Brown for the reason that I just said, um, also because I feel very passionately about what John Brown stood for, what he fought for, and what he died for, uh, and and uh, I'm glad to say that I have done my uh, a part, a very small part, but a part in that struggle, and continue to support Black Lives um, and the movement for uh, freedom, emancipation, uh, true emancipation, and restitution for the crime of slavery. James, for you to be able to, to, to feature, like you mentioned, the character of, of John Brown, and uh, unfortunately, uh, the, the John Browns don't get the get the headlines right now. So for you to be able to bring John Brown up there, and maybe other John Browns can, can step up and say, hey, we're trying to make a difference as well. How cool is that for you to be, uh, like you said, doing just your little part in, in, in this? Well, as far as my work is concerned, that's the whole purpose of of playing, of acting, of films, of art, is to hold a mirror, as Shakespeare said, up to nature so that we can see ourselves in the mirror. We can judge what we see. We can we can decide to make different choices. We can see the efficacy of some forms of action and the stupidity of other forms. As long as we are at each other's throat for no reason whatsoever but the color of the skin or what somebody believes. We are never going to bring this country together. A house divided cannot stand, somebody great once said. And uh, and we have to come together in order to defeat this pandemic, but also to defeat the racism, the sexism, the homophobia, and all the other um, manifestations of man's inhumanity to man we have to keep telling us, telling each other these stories. Uh, we tell a story about a very brave black man who gave his life or went back to support the freedom of all the other black men in the South. Um, and that's a very, very important story to tell at this moment. 
That's right. And again, uh, the film Emperor, it is available on the 18th. And uh, James, I always want to make sure and let our listeners know where they can find more information, not only about the film, but uh, other other art, other uh, things that you're working on as well. Sorry about that. Yeah, that's all right. Um, uh, well, I'm, I got a lot of things coming up. Um, they're not, uh, we're not shooting yet because of this uh, pandemic, uh, but I'm sure you'll hear of them. That's right. Well, well, James, thank you so much for your time. I uh, appreciate the the, the the opportunity to visit with you and looking forward to, to spending more time with the film myself. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoy it. Thanks again for joining us for this episode of Good Questions with Cameron Dole. If you ever have a comment, a question, or anything else you'd like to know, find me on Instagram at aka Cameron, uh, Twitter at Cameron Dole, also on my Facebook page at Cameron Dole Altus. And if you'd like to help on the funding for this podcast, feel free to click the support tab and follow the instruction. And again, thanks to our special guests today, Mo Pitney, Melody Thomas Scott, Christy Pierce Rampone, and James Cromwell. We'll see you around for episode four.